This is the story of Return to Oz. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. The Kansas sky was clear and full of stars. It was a perfect night for sleeping. But Dorothy couldn't even close her eyes. Ever since the tornado six months ago, all she could think about was Oz. Suddenly, a meteor streaked across the sky. Dorothy shot upright in bed. A shooting star! It must be a sign from Oz! The next morning, Dorothy's pet chicken, Belina, found a key in the barnyard. <coughs> Dorothy rushed to her Aunt Em. Look! A key to Oz! It must have come from that star. My friends are in trouble. I just know it. Aunt Em shook her head unhappily. We've got to stop this talk of Oz once and for all, Dorothy. I'm going to take you to a doctor who will help you forget about those bad dreams. A storm was brewing as Aunt Em took Dorothy to the hospital. A stern-faced nurse met them at the door. Hello, Dorothy. We're going to take all those dreams about tin men and scarecrows away for good. Sadly, Aunt Em waved goodbye to Dorothy. Nurse Wilson hustled Dorothy down the hall. It's time for your treatment now. Nurse Wilson strapped Dorothy to a table in a cold, dimly lit room. She attached her to a huge electric machine. Suddenly, there was a flash of lightning. And the room went dark. A blonde girl appeared and quickly unstrapped Dorothy. I'll get you out of here. The girls fled from the hospital, out into the pouring rain. They ran until they came to a raging river. Dorothy, jump! Dorothy leaped into the water and grabbed onto a chicken coop floating nearby. She held on tight all through the storm. In the morning, Dorothy looked around. The other girl was gone, and she was in the middle of a pond that was disappearing even as she watched. A tiny voice piped up. Some place for a chicken coop. Startled, Dorothy turned to see Belina standing next to her. Belina, you can talk. Yes, not bad either for a beginner. Dorothy smiled. Then if you can talk, we must be in Oz. Dorothy carried the talking hen toward a forest clearing. Oh, Belina, I'm so happy. Now you can meet all my friends and see the Emerald City. Look, this is where our house landed after the tornado. And there's the yellow brick road. But the golden path was all torn up. There were broken bricks everywhere. Oh, no, it's ruined. Hurry, Belina. We've got to see if the Emerald City is all right. But it was just as Dorothy feared. The Emerald City was in ruins. Everyone's been turned to stone. Even the Tin Man and the Lion. Suddenly, a gang of strange creatures with wheels instead of hands and feet rolled toward her, trapping her in an alley. She hugged Belina. Who are you? And where's the Scarecrow? The head wheeler cackled wildly. <laughs> the Gnome King rules here now, not the Scarecrow. But if you know of the Scarecrow, we must take you to Mombi. Just then, Dorothy saw an outline of a door in the wall. It had a keyhole. She jammed the Oz key into the hole, and the door opened. Jumping inside, she slammed the door in the wheeler's faces. The head wheeler howled. <laughs> You'll never escape, especially after the Gnome King finds out you have a chicken. He hates chickens. <laughs> Dorothy stumbled through a dark room. She bumped into something cold and smooth. Why, it's a mechanical man. I'll wind him up. With a jerk, the copper man came to life. Thank you. I had completely run down. I'm Tick Tock of the Royal Army of Oz. You must be Dorothy. His Majesty the Scarecrow said you would come. 
Dorothy's eyes lit up. You know the Scarecrow? Please take me to him. We've got to save the Emerald City. Princess Mombay will know where he is. Just keep me wound up and I'll take you to her. Tick-Tock led Dorothy and Belina to Mombay's castle. Dorothy stood before the beautiful princess. Where's my friend, the Scarecrow? Mombay laughed. <laughs> Don't worry your pretty little head about it. He's at the Gnome King's Mountain, where he will stay forever. She studied Dorothy's face carefully. Tell your friends to wait here. I have something to show you. Mombay led Dorothy into a room lined with dozens of glass cabinets. In each cabinet was the head of a beautiful girl. Mombay smiled coldly. These are all mine. I have one for every mood. You will be a pretty girl one day. I think I'll lock you up. And when you get older, I'll take your head too. Dorothy turned to run, but Mombay caught her in an icy grip. The evil princess locked Dorothy and Balina in a tower. Suddenly, from a heap in the corner of the dusty room, a tall figure with a huge smiling head spoke. Hello. I'm Jack Pumpkinhead. The princess threw me here. Would you help put me back together? Dorothy began to untangle Jack. You're just a bunch of sticks. Mombi threw some powder of life on me, and I came alive. Dorothy jumped up. We could use that. I have a plan, but first we have to get out of here. With his long stick arm, Jack unlocked the door. Dorothy slipped out. Jack, build a flying creature out of anything you can find. We'll use the powder to bring it to life. And then we'll escape. Dorothy wound up TikTok, who had stopped again. Then she crept past Mombi's bedroom while the princess was asleep. She found the powder hidden in one of Mombi's cabinets. But just as she reached for it, she knocked over another box. The noise woke the princess. Dorothy and Tick-Tock fled back to the tower. Jack and Belina had almost finished making the flying creature. It had the head of a gump, two sofas for the body, and wings made of palm leaves. Tick-Tock wobbled nervously. Hurry, Dorothy! She sprinkled the powder of life over the gump, saying the magic words that were on the box. We are... Tiog, Piog. Its wings began to flap. The sofas twitched, and it came to life. Suddenly, the door burst open. It was Mumby. Fools! You can't escape from me! But the gump flapped its wings wildly as Jack threw open the tower windows. Wind from the gump's wings sent Mumby reeling backward. Jack, Polina, Tick-Tock, and Dorothy jumped aboard the gump and had sailed through the windows. All night long, the gump soared across the skies of Oz. By dawn, they were approaching the Gnome King's mountain, but the cord that held the sofas together broke, and the gump started to come apart. Jack peered over the side. Oh, no! Hang on! We're going to fall! They tumbled through the air and landed on a snowy mountaintop. Dorothy looked around, shivering. This must be the Gnome King's mountain. Tick-Tock grabbed Belina. The Gnome King hates chickens. We have to hide you. He gently placed Belina inside Jack's hollow head. An eerie glow began to shine from the rocks around them. In the stone, an ancient face took shape. Welcome to my mountains, friends. I am the Gnome King. Come into my palace. At that, the ground opened up, and they were sucked into the mountain. They landed in a huge cavern filled with glistening jewels. Dorothy approached the king. What have you done with the scarecrow? The king smiled wickedly. He's my prisoner. Things have changed since you were last here, Dorothy. Did you know you left something behind? He pointed to his feet. 
These ruby slippers gave me the power to conquer Oz and take back all the gems in the Emerald City. Tears rolled down Dorothy's cheeks as she looked at the ruby slippers. The Gnome King grinned. Don't be so upset, little one. How about a game? I've turned the Scarecrow into an ornament. You have three chances to find him among all my treasures. Touch an ornament, say the word Oz, and if you're right, the Scarecrow will be restored. But if you're wrong, you and all your friends will be turned into ornaments too. <laughs> The king's treasure room was overflowing with thousands of ornaments of every size, shape, and color. How could Dorothy ever find the one that was the scarecrow? Dorothy guessed twice, but she was wrong. She had one chance left. Then Dorothy saw it. The pin cushion. It's green like the Emerald City. She closed her eyes and touched the ornament. Oz. There was a flash, and the scarecrow appeared. The Gnome King burst angrily through the door. You'll never leave here! Never! He grabbed Jack Pumpkinhead, and the top of Jack's cap came off. Belina fluttered out, and an egg teetered on the rim of Jack's head. The Gnome King recoiled in horror. A chicken! No! Don't you know that eggs are poison to me? Belina clucked and sent the egg flying right down the Gnome King's throat. The Gnome King began to crumble, and so did the mountain. Dorothy grabbed the ruby slippers and put them on. I wish us all to the Emerald City. She clicked her heels, and they were gone. Dorothy was standing right in the heart of the city. I command all life to be returned to this land. Suddenly, the Tin Woodman and the Lion and all the people came to life. All the emeralds were restored. The city gleamed like a jewel in the sun. The Scarecrow turned to Dorothy. I was never meant to be king, Dorothy. You should stay and rule Oz. Dorothy smiled. I love you all so much. But Kansas is my home. I wish someone could always watch over you. Because she was still wearing the ruby slippers, the wish began to work. A shimmering light danced in a palace mirror, and a beautiful girl stepped out from the reflection. It was the blonde girl from the hospital. Tick-tock bowed low. It is Ozma, the long-lost queen and rightful ruler of Oz. <laughs> Ozma on the throne, Dorothy said goodbye to her friends, new and old. I'll never forget you, ever. As she waved, a mist filled the throne room and carried Dorothy back to a barnyard in Kansas <laughs> and a dog barking happily in her ear. Toto and Aunt Em. Aunt Em hugged Dorothy tightly. We thought you had drowned. We're so glad you're safe. We'll never worry about your dreams again. Welcome home, Dorothy. Dorothy.